I take responsibility for what happened because it happened on my watch. Hey man, as far as I'm concerned, the farther from Chicago they can ship Rahm Emanuel, the better. Um, I don't know what opportunities he's going to have as the ambassador of Japan, but I only wonder if his family is as thankful as the rest of us that Biden is shipping him over there. Because, you know, you just had to reward Rahm Emanuel for his loyalty to the Democratic Party and, and all the things that he was doing behind the scenes to subvert the two primaries along with the rest of the DNC. But from the Chicago Tribune, President Joe Biden will nominate Rahm Emanuel as his ambassador to Japan, capping off months of speculation that the former Chicago mayor would be tapped for the prominent foreign post the White House announced Friday. There was a lot of speculation before this finally came out, a lot of concern that Biden was going to give him a more, um, I guess, uh, a valuable post or a post within his administration that actually had some bearing on, on influencing policy. This, not so much. The move will give Biden a deeply experienced government tactician and political veteran in his ranks of top diplomats, but the choice also drew criticism from some in the Democratic Party's progressive wing who have found fault with Emmanuel's eight-year tenure as mayor. Okay, I will agree with them on that. He shouldn't be rewarded anything, given the fact that he covered up the murder of Laquan McDonald. But, you know, let's not look a gift horse in the mouth that he's being shipped, like, on the, onto the other side of the world. So I have a slightly different take on this. I'm a little more worried than you. Um, first of all, let's go through all the good things Ram has done to earn all this love. First, he was the uh, basically the chief of staff for Obama. So there's already a connection right there that's connected right over to Biden. They originally wanted to give him a better seat, but again, he's so unpopular that that didn't work out. And eventually public pressure uh, knocked him out of, I forget what, what he wanted to do in the cabinet, but whatever it was. Um, Going to Japan, Japan is a giant economy that has a huge amount of ties to us. I mean, we were, ba we're basically their military still. And someone like Ron, he's going to make a lot of deals. He's going to be the point person that introduces uh, Japanese businesses to American farmland, to American public land. He's the guy that they know will is super connected. They know how America works. He's the hand that they have to grease to get anything done. So Ram is definitely not going to be in America, but he's going to still be affecting America nonetheless. And I think in a very major way with the just the size of the Japanese economy, it's like a, it's what is it, number three uh, largest economy on the planet. He's the ambassador. That's a lot of power. Why did you have to take my feel good story and <laughs> suddenly turn it into something that, yeah, you got a point. Now I'm, now I'm concerned. I mean, when he was Obama's chief of staff, he had a big hand in, I think, influencing Obama to not, not try to negotiate from Medicare to all to single payer, but from single payer to Obamacare, which was Mitt Romney's plan. So uh, he did the biggest thing he did and why he is, this is the real reason he gets the special treatment. That's part of it. That was a lot. That was not fully him. The thing that he did, he got the votes for it. Yeah. The thing that he did, he's the guy that put in the provision in um, Dodd-Frank, I believe, that said banks are automatically, without having to go into Congress, bailed out at the rate of $100 billion a day, which is what the banks used two years ago. We were covering that. No one was covering that. Hardland was covering that because we are like, what is happening for um, – I want to say, like for three months, the Fed was just giving a, again. Their cap is a hundred billion. They were giving that much every day to the banks, every single day for like three months, and that was something that he made happen. Because before, if, it, if he had not existed, what would have happened is we would have had a depression a couple of years ago, and what would have happened is. The banks would have had to normally what they normally do. They have to go to Congress with their their hands pulling their pockets. I don't have any money. What am I going to do? I need a bailout. That would have hurt the stock market and confidence in the system. Rom put the piece together that they don't have to do that anymore. It's just an automatic process. The bank says, "I'm out of money. Give me more. Give me a hundred billion a day at max." And that's why he is loved because Wall Street controls both parties, and he gave them access to a hundred billion dollars a day. 
so it seems that this was a strategic move on the part of the Biden administration since they, I think they were looking at giving him transportation before they gave it to yeah, Buttigieg. That was it. So this was the shift to. Yeah, this is a prominent position. I mean, ambassadorships are, have always been like that. It's a very, you're effectively the, the uh, dip diplomatic representative or the representative of the diplo, you know, of an entire country. And Japan is literally the biggest capitalist market besides the U S. Yeah. Well, what about China? What about how it, uh, th their position next to China, though, as far as the economies and, and cr creating um, products and goods? China doesn't need that same connection in the way because Japan is basically a client state to some degree. It has a lot of autonomy, but it is effectively a U.S. client to some degree. Again, we're their military. They have a self-defense force, but that's like all the old stuff that our military doesn't use is their self-defense force. Our bases are there. We're the thing called... We're completely economically connected to Japan. The amount of power, I, I, I remember someone said, I, I never looked into it to see if it was actually accurate, but Japan's economy was growing at such a rate at one point that it would have surpassed the U.S. economy. And the U.S. is like, nope, now you're stagnating. That's just how it is. So if uh, you're, if he went to China, that's, he doesn't have the same influence. China already is gaining influence everywhere. They don't really care about Rahm Emanuel. What do they care about? What are they going to do? Agree? They already they already work with Trump. They have direct connections. They don't even need an ambassador for that. It's a lot more relevant for Japan. Well, all I can say is in a perfect world. I take responsibility for what happened because it happened on my watch. That I was agree. that was that was really the best part. That's such a good video. Thank you. I, sp I think I spent about two hours putting it together today just for this just for this story. That's the kind of show prep I put in. That's hey, I gotta say, everyone watching, this is more prep than we do at Hard Lens Media. <laughs> <laughs> My I love that. But it's like, you know what? I do hope uh, Godzilla steps on him. Yeah. Uh, I hope that but I think in more reality, I hope he just gets food poisoning from bad shoot sushi. I don't know. I what what can I ask? Yeah, if if uh, if prayers were heard.